Hey everyone, so I wanted to take some time and actually try to explain my knowledge of the Charge Blade. I have a lot of people that I've spoken to that have said that the Charge Blade is so technical, it's so awkward, it's so complex, that they just stay away from it, they don't bother with it. And that kind of actually sucks. I love the Charge Blade personally, it's kind of like the Swiss Army Knife of all the weapons, it's got its fast attacks via the sword mode, it's got its great defense options with its reasonably sizable shield and the shield itself is actually more than just a defensive tool it's actually a weapon itself as well so your defense is actually also your offense which I can get into after the hunt that I'm actually going to do and include in this video and then you also have some reasonably sizable damage with its counterpart the axe mode so I want to explain all of that break it all down in the briefest way possible so for the duration of this video, I'm going to include a hunt so I can show off some of the mechanics I'm going to talk about and some that I, I'm going to kind of mention but not go too in-depth with just to avoid any confusion. I'd like to go into the moves, the mechanics, including things like file management and things of that nature, and then what I'm actually going to start with are the builds. So without further ado, let's go. So first off, we have two styles of charge blade play and two types of charge blades those two styles are super amped element discharge and savage axe and the two types of charge blades are elemental charge blades like this one here the ice and impact charge blades like this one the chrome fortress or the volatile blade there's actually a lot of impact files so there's two different types of charge blades that you can use and two different styles that you can use both styles are viable for both types, so there is no right or wrong answer. So let's go ahead and get into the builds. So for Elemental Charge Blade, what you want to focus on primarily is your actual elemental damage. That's what's going to give you the biggest buff to your attacks. So for this Ice Charge Blade, for example, I've got my Ice Attack maxed out. Everything else is kind of fluff, honestly. Uh, critical Boost and Wex, those are relevant for... You have to use the sword to charge your files, and while you're charging your files, you want to do as much damage as possible. That's kind of like common sense. So that's where Critical Boost and Wex come into play. In addition to that, any attack that you do with your physical weapon, be it your sword, your shield, or your axe, you can crit. So that's another reason why Critical Boost and Wex are relevant. So that's where those fall into place. I'm going to get more into critting with this weapon later. Focus is really big for filling your meter, as I mentioned before. Maintaining uh, your your files is part of the biggest deal of Charge Blade. You want to maintain your files the entire fight. So having focus allows you to refill that meter as fast as possible. Hence focus. Magazine is really big for maximizing your damage with Super Amped Element Discharge and maximizing the amount of time that your meters stay active with your sword meter or with Savage Axe. However, if you can't afford capacity boost, it's not a weapon breaking mechanic. You can still totally play with a totally viable style without this skill. It's just highly recommended that you consider if you have the magazine jewel, I absolutely recommend that you put it on all of your charge blade builds. And if you don't, then I highly recommend you try to find an armor piece, such as the Dodogama Legs, for example, that has this as a bonus. I want to say the Dodogama Legs have it. I think the Brachydeo's head has it. There's a couple of options that you do have. So, finally, we have Iron Wall, Guard, your guard skill. Guard is very relevant because when you successfully guard an attack without too much pushback, you can actually counter-attack with a Super Amped Element Discharge, an Amped Element Discharge, whatever have you. So that's why Guard actually becomes very relevant. And the nice thing about Charge Blade is realistically you only need three levels. When your shield is charged, that gives you one free level. When you perfectly guard point, that gives you another free level. And I'm going to get into guard points, as I mentioned, in a little bit when I get into the hunt. So that's the basis for elemental style charge blade let's go ahead and switch over to impact so here we are with impact charge blade i have the royal star shield that is the guild weapon that came out with this latest appreciation fest 
So, as you can see, a lot of the skills are similar. However, there are some differences. The biggest difference is this skill right here, Artillery. Impact files do not have an element. They are elementalist. However, they do not benefit necessarily from the non-elemental boost. Unless, like this weapon, it doesn't have an element. Your files do scale with raw damage, so attack boost can be viable. For example, if I actually switch over to this loadout, then you'll see that I actually maxed out my attack boost because this, this set, this build, allowed me to make space for that. However, the difference is almost negligible. I'm not saying that you need to go out of your way to have it in order to maximize damage. However, if you can fit it in, then by all means. What's truly relevant is artillery. As you can see here, strengthens explosive attacks like gun land shells, weapons fire, and hence, hence, charge blade file attacks. This only applies, make no mistake, this only applies to impact files. This has no effect on elemental files. Elemental files are only strengthened by the actual element itself. Impact files are only strengthened by artillery and the food skill, feline bombardier, which I will show probably, potentially, before I go into a hunt. So those are the baselines for your builds. You can have a couple of other little onesies and twosies here. Those are really for your comfort. For example, if you know that you're going to be spamming um, guard and then counter, then offensive guard can be really, really beneficial to you because every time you perfectly guard, you'll get that uh, attack increase right before you pump out your big damage attacks so it's things like that that you can consider applying but as far as what's truly relevant you always want to try to incorporate your magazine jewel if you can help it focus and artillery everything after that is just you maximizing your damage as much as possible so i figure it'd be simplest if i went over a hunt that i did in a previous video so the first thing that I like to do is to fill my meters, charge my shield, fill my files, so that way the next portion of damage that I do is all condensed and together. I don't spend time trying to refill my file meter again after I pump out one SAED unless I know I've got the window to do so. So I'm going to fill my file to red, four hits, charge my file, shield bash, into the AAED, turn it into the shield, charge, charge my sword for good measure. I missed a fourth hit, but there's a fourth hit right there. Now I've got a fully charged sword, shield, all of my files, and a red meter, so that way once I burn all my files, I can simply charge my files and they're full again. So I know there's an opening coming, I spam out an SAED. I can simply charge my files, and if I had chosen to, I could have spammed out another SAED. However, I wasn't 100% sure that I was going to have the window to do so, so I opted to play it safe. What we have coming up here is a roar, and you can actually block roars, so if you block perfectly, that's one of the ways that you can actually enter your AED, your SAED is after a guard. Now, if there's too much pushback on the attack, you can't get that counter attack. However, if your guard skill is high enough and the attack is weak enough, then you can actually counter with an SAED after a successful guarded attack. So to show off here, as you can see, every time I block, you actually see damage numbers. What's happening is a guard point. Guard point is any time your weapon is positioned directly in front of your character. There's many different ways that you can do this. However, any of those attacks that leave your shield presented in front of your body count as a guard point. The one that I'm doing on purpose here is the morph attack where you block with R2 and press triangle. That's how you morph manually from sword and shield to axe mode. That animation counts as a guard point. 